Uh, let's talk venue then, guys, as we always seem to do when it comes to U.S. home World Cup qualifiers. I'll put on my meteorologist cap for just a second. <laughs> uh, Thursday, the high 33, a low of 2 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. It's going to be cloudy, but it is maybe most importantly going to be dry. There was some snow in Columbus today. Looks like there might be some snow on yeah. Friday, but on Thursday, uh, it won't be snowing. So, Taylor, is... Is this the right choice by the U.S. Soccer Federation? Does this actually give the United States an advantage over El Salvador? Listen, you guys saw my tweet. You guys have heard me behind closed doors. I was very critical and still am to a certain extent of why you would do this because I think it evens the playing field when you go to the extreme levels that the weather is going to be in both Columbus and Minneapolis. Now, in saying that, Columbus has turned the corner a little bit. So at kickoff, it's going to be 26 degrees. The United States played Costa Rica in 2001 in a 2002 World Cup qualifier on February 28th, and the weather was 26 degrees. I did a little digging, though, because in my mind, I looked at this and said, you can play a little bit more south and mm -hmm. not have to worry about it, whether it's Nashville, whether it's Kansas City, whether it's even to a certain extent Austin. And there's a lot of conversation within U.S. circles about travel. Well, that digging, they couldn't play in Nashville because of the NFL, although the Titans lost to the Bengals, which no one expected. But that field, they didn't trust in cold weather because they already have been there and the field's not good enough. Sporting Kansas City Stadium, the heating isn't working currently, so they couldn't host. So when they really looked at it, it all came down to travel. And Herc, you've done it, I've done it, we've all done it. To play in Seattle, to play in Portland with the 13 European guys, I get the decision. I just still am mind-boggled a little bit that you want to even the playing field when it's 5 degrees or mm. 12 degrees. I think they're going to luck out in Columbus, and it's going to be 26. But that Minneapolis, I've looked at the forecast. At kickoff, it is 5 degrees as of right now. 5. That's not what it feels like. That's what the temperature is. I think that evens the playing field, in my opinion, although we all know nobody from Honduras wants to play in that either. <laughs> but are we really going to level the playing field for them? Are we so worried about the El Salvadorian fan base, the Honduran fan base, that we got to take them to these places where there's going to be less of their fans? Are we so worried about the style of play that Honduras or El Salvador plays, the U.S., I mean, uh, that, that you're going to level the playing field for them. This is like promotion relegation. When you see any league where there's a dogfight in promotion relegation, the teams in lower standing that fight promotion, that fight mm. not to be relegated, have the uglier fields, the higher grass, ha have the, st the pitches that are all messed up. Anything they can do to level the playing field against the better teams, bring them down to us. Mm. That is what essentially the U.S. Men's National Team is doing. They are bringing them down to them. This is what El Salvador or Honduras wants. They want the U.S. not to be able to play smoothly, not to be able to play quick, not to be able to play the way they can play in transition. Level the playing field, and they gave it to them. Doesn't worry me so much against El Salvador. I don't think they can hit a top speed and, and, and run past the U.S. Against Honduras in Minneapolis, if that thing gets ugly, watch out, because Honduras can be direct, and they may yeah. actually prefer to Kyoto, be direct. Kyoto, Ellis, Ellis, Kyoto, Kyoto, Lozano, yep. all those guys. Yep. Uh, that could be that could be a big problem. All right, brass tax time, brass tax time. Uh, let's get a point total for this window. Taylor, what is your expectation for mm -hmm. what the U.S. will take away from these three games? At the minimum, they have to get seven points. At the minimum. And especially with the way the Canada home game for them, so United mm -hmm. States playing away, has now turned out for the United States. And the, the players that are going to be missing, it's not going to be a full stadium. And listen, that's not I'm not being disrespectful to the 13,000 Canadian fans that are going to show up. But the point is, it's a lot better than what could be there. And so, at the minimum, that's a point. And you got to win your two home games. It has to be seven, if not nine. But in my opinion, at the minimum, it has to be seven points out of this window. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, El Salvador is a team that's beaten you once in its history. And that was a friendly, like, in 1992. Honduras is another team that you essentially dominate at home. So, there are two home games, six points. Canada signs the Christian Pulisic flu game. I mean, they've not been used since, what, 1968? Mm. So this is a game, even though it's on turf, you would expect a result. No, Alfonso Davies, very big there. Estacchio could be out for that game as well. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the point. Seven is the minimum. Mm. No Davies, no Estacchio, half attendance. I would have thought you guys would have said nine points, that the U.S. would be, uh, would be favored there in Canada. Mm. But both say seven. So we finally They're have... playing on concrete, Seb. They're playing on concrete. <laughs> so seven points, seven points. Uh, we'll lower the bar just that little bit.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.